Now we have a pretty challenging question. This one has us to compute the domain and the range. And to compute the domain, we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna talk about the range. So computing the domain, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it up into its pieces and I'm gonna look at the first piece of the function. I'm gonna label this one, two, and three. And for the first piece of the function, I wanna know what the domain constraints of that first piece are. Well, x squared has no domain constraints. So we have x is less than or equal to minus 1. For our second part, we have root x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now here, for root x to be defined, x is greater than or equal to 0. And for 1 over x minus 1 to be defined, x does not equal 1. And we have our third constraint, which comes from this bound here, which is and minus 1 is less than x, which is less than 1. And I need to satisfy all three at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a number line. And I'm going to go with 0 greater than or equal to 0. This is my first condition. My second condition is I do not equal 1. And this happens at 1. My third condition is I am I don't equal minus 1. I'm defined all the way up to not equaling 1. And now I'm going to intersect these three. So I draw a dotted line over these three parts. And I'm going to find where it intersects all three. I'm not all three coming from the left. I don't, I'm not all three. I'm not all three. At zero, I'm all three. Just after zero, I'm all three. But at one, so at zero, I'm all three. I'm going up to one, but I'm not all three at one, and I'm not all three after. So this tells me that for my second condition, x is in the interval zero to one, but not including one. Okay, And before, if we write the interval notation, x is from minus infinity up to and including minus 1. For my third condition, x over 2 has no domain constraints. Thus, x is greater than or equal to 1. x is in 1 to infinity. Now that I've looked at each of the branches or each of the pieces of my function, I'm going to combine their domains together. So now I have to combine the domains of each piece. To do this, we use, I like to do three lines using the or. So the first one was everything less than one. The second one was including zero, but up to but not including one. And the third one was including one off to infinity. And if I take the union of these three, I get up to and including one, including zero, up to infinity. So my domain is going to be minus infinity to minus 1, union with 0 to infinity. To make this even clearer, I am at 0. At 1, I'm no longer here, but I am defined here. And then I go to infinity. So that's how we do the domain. For the range, the range is a little bit interesting. And to help with the range, what I'm going to do 
is I'm simply going to draw out my first and my last function. So at minus 1 and at 1, minus 1, it's x squared, and x squared looks like this. Okay? And that's at minus 1. Okay? And then y equaling x over a half looks kind of like this, but I'm going to fill it in here where this value here is a half. Okay? So here I know that y can be in the set 2 to infinity. But the question is, can it be more? This middle function that I haven't drawn that goes from 0 to 1, because remember we said the domain was 0 to 1, what happens there? And to understand that, let's explore root x minus 1 over x minus 1 a little bit more. As x is greater than or equal to 0, x equals root x squared. So this equals root x minus 1, root x squared minus 1, which equals root x minus 1 over root x minus 1, root x plus 1, which can reduce to 1 over root x plus 1. One. And I just realized that, oh, never mind, never mind, this be, because these can cancel. And because we're not defined at 1, this is okay. okay. Now here, this function, when x equals, as x grows, this function is going to shrink because root x is going to get bigger and bigger. So from 0, when x equals 0, 1 over root x plus 1 equals 1. As x increases, this decreases. So as I go from 0, I'm going to start at one, and I'm going to decrease. And the question is, how far do I decrease? Do I go below that one half? Or do I go above the one half? Or do I go to the one half? Well, to check this, we're going to do the limit as x approaches one of root x minus one over x minus one. And this equals the limit as x approaches 1 of root of 1 over root x plus 1 using the cancellation that we did above, which equals 1 over root 1 plus 1, or 1 over 2. So that limit, it actually goes perfectly to that point. And we're actually continuous at that point. But this means that my range, my overall range, is going to be one half to infinity. Question four is a little interesting because we're going to have, we're going to be computing the first, second, third, and fourth derivative. So the first derivative, we have a product rule. It's going to be sine x plus x cos x. For the second derivative, we're going to get cos x plus cos x minus x sine x, which equals 2 cos x minus x sine x. For the third derivative, 
we're going to take this and we're going to derive it, giving me minus 2 sine x minus sine x minus x cos x, which equals minus 3 sine x minus x cos x. And for the fourth derivative, we're going to get minus 3 cos x minus cos x plus x sine x, which equals minus 4 cos x plus x sine x. We have our first four derivatives. The second part is asking you to do the multiples of 4. So if n equals 4k, where k is a non-negative integer, what's my derivatives? Well, to do this, we really should have what is f of 4 for the fourth derivative, what is the eighth derivative, what is the twelfth derivative, and so on and so forth. Okay, And that might take a little bit of time, but for spoilers, the fourth is minus 4 cos x plus x sine x. The eighth is minus 8 cos x plus x sine x. The twelfth is minus 12 cos x plus x sine x. And when we see it like this, the nth derivative should probably will be minus n cos x plus x sine x. We're looking for patterns here. Okay? When looking for patterns, there's three pieces of advice I give. One, minus one to the n equals minus one, or gives us the pattern minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. And if we do minus one to the n plus one equals plus, Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So that's how we get the alternating signs. We have a minus one to the power n. The next thing is don't, do not compute the multiplication. If every time, let's say you're multiplying by another number, by another number, by another number, if you do that multiplication early, it's a lot harder to see patterns. For example, if I have 1, 2, 6, 24, 120, that's a hard pattern to see. But if I have 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 2 times 3, let's make that 6 a little bit more obvious, 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, this is a lot more obvious. We can see that it is n factorial for something like this. 